Looking at the biggest games on the PS4 and Xbox One, the most prominent games are sequels, and it's been that way in video gaming for decades. But one of the first complaints is the milked franchise. No one does it more like the major platform series like Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed. But looking at PlayStation and Xbox, which platform has milked the most? I'll lay some ground rules because a topic like this can quickly get out of hand. Ground rule number one. Baseball, basketball, soccer, football, hockey, and badminton video games are exempt from this list. Why? Well, because they're seasonal games and they're refreshed for an updated roster. And we'll leave that as the excuse. Ground rule number two. PlayStation has four consoles and Xbox has three. Also, PlayStation has two handhelds. So PlayStation's franchises have been around four to five years longer than the oldest games presented here. Ground rule number three. We are discussing four milk franchises on each platform, and PlayStation has a couple of extra milk franchises over the Xbox, but we are going to stick to the four of the biggest on each. We'll start with the oldest milk franchise on PlayStation with Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo debuted on the original PlayStation back in 1998. The game was massive, and at its time, it was near photorealistic to our visual standards. The series continued on with two games, each on the PS1, PS2, and PS3, with additional game releases in Asia, Europe, and UK. The final, 10th game was GT Sport in 2017. From 1998 to 2017, a milk franchise rating of 0.5%, or an average of a game every other year. Let's change lanes right over to Xbox's exclusive racer that has been milked since it launched in 2005. Forza started on the original Xbox and was later bookended with a spin-off series, Forza Horizon. It's safe to assume that Forza Horizon 4 is hitting the streets at the end of 2018, which makes it 10 games in just 13 years, a milked franchise rating of 0.8%, almost twice as milked as Gran Turismo. Ratchet & Clank is a series geared toward a wide audience. The series started in 2002 on the PlayStation 2. Since then, Insomniac has tirelessly cranked out 17 iterations of the duo across the PlayStation platform, with each one received well by critics and fans alike. 14 years in the franchise means that early adopters have been able to enjoy the latest Ratchet & Clank adventures with their own kids. 17 games in 14 years gives this series a milked franchise rating of 1.2%. Sticking with the lighthearted theme, the milk competition on the Xbox side is the Fable series. Fable is an open world RPG that started in 2004 on the original Xbox with a massively popular sequel on the Xbox 360 in 2008. A doomed failure Kinect game was a part of the pedigree of the Fable series, which was insulted even more by a cancelled free-to-play title planned for 2017. But a reliable rumor puts a new AAA Fable game in 2019. Still. Fable was able to bring nine games to Xbox over the course of 13 years, a milked franchise rating of 0.7%. Xbox gamers are probably split about whether they want a new Fable, but Xbox needs an exclusive RPG in its portfolio. Uncharted is the flagship action-adventure game and one of the premier bragging rights for the caliber of games Sony has on the PlayStation starting in 2007. Uncharted may not seem like a milk franchise at all, and at first glance, most may say Uncharted only has four games, with one mobile game that we won't count, but the Uncharted series offered a total of eight in just 10 years. With a milk franchise rating of 0.8%, such quality and dependable enjoyment, it seems impossible to consider Uncharted milked. After all, the moniker milked should be reserved for unwanted iterations. This brings us to Xbox's Gears of War series. When Gears curb stomped on the Xbox 360 in 2006, it was a revelation with cover mechanics that changed shooters and created an entire genre mimicked by the generation's greatest games. With just six games, all of them runaway hits except for Judgment, and one remaster on the Xbox One in 10 years, a milked franchise rating of 0.6%. The Coalition is already planning the next Gears game, but don't expect to see it for another couple of years. 
In April 2018, after a long eight-year gap since the first full true sequel in the series, God of War is getting rebooted with an overhauled combat system and a more personal story. God of War is one of the best-looking games to hit consoles, but the God of War franchise is full of collections, portables, and remasters. In God of War's 13 years of hack and slashing, the Milk franchise rating is a full 1% matched only by an annualized sports game. But a God of War game has not been on the PlayStation platform since 2015. Even with such a high Milk rating, a new God of War is definitely welcomed. Mention Milk franchises, and the first game to come to mind is always Halo. Halo launched on the Xbox platform in 2001, making first-person shooters on console not only viable, but absolutely essential, and Halo set the mark for console gaming. But that success meant that Halo needed six full release games, with a seventh on the way in 2019. Halo extended to the isometric genre in Spartan Assault and two Halo Wars games. Still, Halo sold every time it dropped on the Xbox. In its 16 years, Halo presented 13 games, a milked franchise rating of 0.8%. Are gamers tiring of Halo, especially after a lackluster reception of Halo 5? Well, Xbox gamers are universally ready for the smallest news of Halo 6. Looking at Gran Turismo, Ratchet & Clank, Uncharted & God of War, the average milk rating for these four games on the PlayStation is 0.88%. Xbox's Forza, Fable, Gears, and Halo games come out to an average milk rating of 0.72%, slightly lower than the PlayStation, but remember the PlayStation has diversified itself across an extra console and two generally unsuccessful handhelds. There are also a few smaller titles with multiple sequels and prequels on PlayStation that don't generally garner those milk complaints in the gaming community. The Xbox has drawn games across three consoles, and this just goes to show that the PlayStation generally has more diverse and higher count of unique games over the Xbox. But as far as milked, tired and overplayed franchises, both consoles are equally guilty, and it doesn't help that multi-platform publishers fill in the cracks with even more milked franchises. But chances are some of your favorite games are part of a milked franchise. After all, a game wouldn't be great if it didn't sell enough to warrant a 17th version with a few remasters thrown in for good measure. So what do you think? Are we at an acceptable level of milk with our games? On Twitter a few days ago, I put out a poll and asked which console, the PS4 or the Xbox, has the most milk franchises. And did you notice that if you had a particular disdain for the other platform that you tend to brand their games as milked? Or are you one of those that just enjoys the games as long as they're good? But as gamers, we like that familiarity of our favorite games. We know what we like, and if a sequel meaningfully improves the series, we tend to forgive a new version of a game that comes out every other year. This is Cold Eastwood. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. If this is your first time here to the channel, welcome. Subscribe to show your support, hit the bell, or check back once a week. Every week I try to get quality, viewable content out about one of our favorite hobbies. I had a great time gathering footage and playing these games for this video. And if you liked it as much as I did, leave a like and share it on Twitter or a gaming forum and get people talking about these milked games. Add me at Colt Eastwood on Twitter and Xbox Live, and I'll talk to you all soon. Remember, have fun gaming. More news is coming every week, and please be nice.